Hi, welcome back to the Solutions Manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 1-42 from R.C. Hibbeler Mechanics of Materials 8 Edition. According to this problem, the pins on the frame at D and E each have a diameter of 0.25 inch. If these pins are subjected to double shear, determine the average shear stress in each pin. Now to solve this problem, first of all, we have to draw all the support reactions at the pins D and E. So at point D, I have a rocker support. So I have a vertical reaction. At point E, I have a pin support. So I have a horizontal support reaction and the vertical support reaction. Let's label them. So let's call this DY. And this right here is EX and this is EY. Now we can apply the equations of equilibrium. So our first equation would be summation of forces in X direction equals to zero. I am considering the right hand side as positive. So we have EX minus 500 equals to zero. So from here EX comes out to be 500 LBs. Now our second equation of equilibrium would be summation of moments at point E equals to zero. I am considering the counterclockwise direction as positive. And why I have considered the point E? Because at point E I have the maximum numbers of unknowns. EX and EY will not produce any moment about point E because they are passing through it. So there is no momenta for EX and EY with respect to the point E. The 300 LB force is trying to rotate the frame in counterclockwise direction about point E. So the moment produced by this 300 LB force will be taken as positive. And the moment arm is this three fit distance. DY is trying to rotate the frame in anti-clockwise direction about point E. So the moment produced by this dy will be taken as negative. And the moment arm is this six fit distance. This 500 LB force is also trying to rotate the frame in counterclockwise direction about point E. So the moment produced by this 500 LB force will also be taken as positive. And the moment arm is this six fit. Equals to zero. So when we simplify it, dy comes out to be 650 LBs. Now we have to find the EY. So for EY, we can apply summation of forces in Y direction equals to zero. I'm considering up direction as positive. So we have EY plus DY minus 300 equals to zero. So from here, EY plus DY, which is 650 minus 300 equals to zero. So EY comes out to be negative 350 LPs. Now we have calculated all the support reactions at pins D and E. So for average shear stress, So the average shear stress in the pin D is equal to the shear force VD over since both the pins are in double shear it means twice of the cross section of the pin are bearing this shear force. So 2 into cross section cross sectional area of the pin D. 
let's call this equation 1 similarly for pin e so average shear stress in the pin e is equal to the shear force ve divided by 2 times the cross sectional area ae let's call this equation 2 so now we have to find the vd and ve so the shear force vd is equals to the dy since we have only one component which is in the vertical direction so 650 lbs similarly for the shear force ve we have to use the pythagoras theorem because at pin e i have two components one vertical component and one horizontal component so ex square plus ey square so shear force ve is equals to 500 square plus negative 350 square so shear force ve comes out to be 610.33 lbs now we have to find the cross sectional area of the pins d and e since both of the pins have the same diameter of 0.25 inch so ad is equals to ae which in turns is equals to pi d square upon 4 because the cross section of the pins will look like a circular area so ad equals to ae is equals to pi by 4 into 0.25 square which comes out to be so ad equals to ae comes out to be 0 0.049 inch square now we can substitute all the values in our equation 1 and equation 2 so from equation 1 the average shear stress in the pin d comes out to be 650 over 2 into 0 0.049 it is equals to 6621 psi pounds per square inch so this is our first answer and now for the average shear stress in the pin e we have to do the shear force ve which is 610.33 lbs divided by 2 into 0 0.049 so it comes out to be 6217 psi pounds per square inch so this is our second answer so this is it for this problem i hope you will find this video helpful if you do please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates and if you have any questions or any doubts then feel free to ask in the comment section and i will answer it as soon as possible thank you